Okay, here is a problem that I made up, and I actually already started this, but I realized I made a mistake, so I'm doing it again. Uh, so here I have a penny with a mass of 2.5 grams, and that is about the mass of a penny, a real penny. Uh, there are different mass pennies, because never mind. Uh, and it's on a rotating platform, which is a record player, you know, vinyl player. And so if the penny is 15 centimeters from the center of the rotating platform, and it rotates at 33 RPM, what's the coefficient of friction needed to keep it from sliding? So let's, let's do this. Here is my record player, and here's my penny. And it's moving around in a circle like this. So what force are acting on the penny? Well, I have the, let's draw it right here. I have the gravitational force. I have the normal force. And then I have something pushing it this way, right? Because if it's moving around in a circle, then it's accelerating this way. That's the direction of the acceleration. When an object moves in a circle, it accelerates towards the center of that circle. So there has to be a force pushing it that way, and that force is the frictional force. So that's it. There is no force pushing away. Okay, uh, so what's the magnitude of this acceleration? Well, the acceleration of an object moving in a circle, we call that the centripetal acceleration, is v squared over r, or you could write that as omega squared times r, where omega is the angular velocity. So in this case, we have an omega of 33 RPMs, which is revolutions per minute. But if I want to use this and I want to get it in uh, meters per second squared, then this has to be in units of radians per second. And so I have to convert this to radians per second. So I can say there are two pi radians in one revolution. So if I go around a circle once, I get two pi radians. Now I need to convert minutes to seconds. So if I say there are, uh, in one minute, there are 60 seconds. And so this is the key to unit conversion, multiplying by things that are one. If it has uh, two pi radians is one revolution. So if I multiply by that over that, I, I, that's one, I'm not changing the answer. So let's just put this, I'll put this in my calculator really quick, just so you can see how it's done. So I get, um, let me drop that. So I get 33 revolutions per minute times two times pi. And I gotta make that a number, I can't remember how to, number, yeah, times, and then divide by 60. So I get 3.46 radians per second. And then I had the radius was uh, 0.15 meters. The mass is uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative third kilograms. Okay, so let's look at in the vertical direction. Let me write down this. F net is equal, F net Y is equal to N minus MG equals zero because the object is not accelerating in the vertical direction. So the net force in the vertical direction has to be equal to zero. So that's what I have. And I can solve that for N, N equals MG. Be very careful. A lot of people always put N is equal to MG and it's not always true, okay? It happened to be true in this case. Now in the wider, in the X direction, I can write F net X equals that acceleration is going to be negative M omega squared R, right? It's mass times acceleration. And the acceleration in this case is in that direction. And that is equal to negative the frictional force because the frictional force is in that direction. So now I can use this frictional force is less than or equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And if I'm looking for the minimum coefficient, then F friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So I can put this in up here along with mg for n, and I get and the negatives cancel, m omega squared r equals mu s mg, and the masses cancel. And then if I divide by g, I get mu s equals omega squared r over g, and that's going to be equal to uh, 3.46 0.15, 9.8. And if I put that in my calculator, oh, I shouldn't have dropped that. 3.46, 9.8 divided by. 
and I get 0 .0, 0 0.0053. So I do not need very much friction to keep that thing on the table. Okay, now the second part says, what would happen if the penny is moved to seven centimeters? So the nice thing about this problem is that I've already done everything, right? By not plugging in 0.15 until the end, all I have to do is change this and plug in 0 0.07. So let me do that. So if I put in the same values, I'd get 3.46, 0 0.07, and then divide by 9.8, I get 0 .0, 0, point, I'm sorry, 0 0.025. So I have, it's even less friction, right? And that kind of makes sense, because imagine if the penny was at the middle, it wouldn't need any friction at all. So the closer you get, the less friction you need to hold it in there. Okay, the end.